Okay, let's start with this simpler problem first. So let's start by trying to balance this equation and then we'll go back to the harder one. Okay, so let's talk about this together. I think you might have made uh, a misstep. Let's see, so we're looking at this one, right? Um, so I don't think it matters here whether we start with the hydrogen or the oxygen. So let's start with the hydrogen. Um, so what number should we assign here? What's the simplest number I can assign here? One. Yeah. So then what should this number be over here? Two. Now, how many hydrogens do we have on the left now? Total? Two. Oh, okay. Two. So yeah, all right, so that was the problem with this. So I think you were saying two hydrogens and then translating that into a number two. So basically, the best thing to do is this is almost like trial and error. Put down a number and then check whether you're really balanced. Does one times two equal one times two? Yes, so you should always just check. This is, like I say, it's really just trial and error. So if you happen to make a wrong guess originally, that's fine, as long as we're checking it. Is one times two equal to two times two? No, so we have to go back and try one times two. Okay, so now with these numbers, now um, we have to figure out a number for this, which is a little bit trickier. So let's try to work out this number on half. Good, that's right. Um, we only have one oxygen here, so what can we multiply two by to give us one? Well, two times one half. We, we saw earlier you could use algebra to work this out, or you could just use trial and error. Is one half times two equal to one times one? Yes, so that works. Okay. Um, and then you might not want to stick with fractional coefficients. So could we have to change these now? These would be uh, 2 and 1 and 2. Okay. And these would probably be your final answers. Okay. All right. So um, we reviewed how to do this. Um, so the key thing is that when you write down a number, you should always double check to make sure that they're really balancing. This is all about multiplication, right? You multiply the stoichiometric coefficient with the subscript number. The way you figure out the total number of elements is by multiplying the stoichiometric coefficient with the subscript number. If there is no subscript number, that really means there's a subscript number of one. Well, just for practice, now let's try balancing this where we try putting the number on the oxygen first rather than the hydrogen. So let's try working that out on paper. Good. I think you both got correct answers. Um, usually we like to start by assigning a number one. Who would it be easier to assign the number one to? This left oxygen or this right oxygen? The right oxygen. Let's see. Well, actually, if you put the number one over here, you end up with a fraction over here. Wouldn't it be easier to say that we have one of these? Because then if we have one of these, what should this coefficient be? And now we don't have to work with fractions. 
Okay, and fractions, if we're working with fractions, especially when you're under time pressure, fractions lead to mistakes. So you want to avoid fractions if you can on, this, on the test. Even though, you know, theoretically we can all do problems with fractions, but under time pressure we all make more mistakes with fractions. So generally, if you're getting a fraction, maybe you can kind of reverse where you're putting the one. And, um, instead of putting the one over here and getting a one half over here, we can put the one over here and get a two over here. We might have been able to use that trick on that previous ammonia example as well to avoid the fractions, but I didn't think of it there. Okay, and now what should this number be? Two. Two. And we don't need to massage any of these because they're not fractions, and again, we've gotten the same numbers that we got before, two, one, and two.